Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today I'm going to be doing a GWP special. Now GWP, if you don't know, stands for Gift with Purchase, and that's when LEGO throws in uh, one or two additional special sets with a purchase when you achieve a certain payment threshold. Uh, and it won't have escaped your attention that I've been buying rather expensive trains recently to add to my city. Uh, and as a result, I've managed to achieve a pair of gifts each time I bought one of those trains uh, by topping up my order with a few minor additional sets, like the absolutely fabulous uh, Stunt Bathtub Bike, <laughs> which is great, I must say. Uh, so today I'm planning to build all four of these and kind of come up with some plans of how to incorporate them in my city. Uh, so I've just got to decide where to start and I think there's absolutely no contest. It really has to be the new Forest Hideout 40567 because, well, I know a few people that are very keen to get inside uh, and also Mrs. Hood who uh, has been going on at me to upgrade our digs from just a random tree in Sherwood Forest to a full-blown forest hideout uh, for quite some time. So uh, yeah, she'll be wanting to look around the kitchen and bathrooms, no doubt. <laughs> How sexist am I? <laughs> Incidentally, I don't know if this set really needs a review other than to say that it is clearly very awesome. Uh, one thing that I didn't know when I bought this was that the guy had a massive tattoo on his back and I don't think it is a t-shirt because you can see his shoulder blades uh, there as well so he's got a huge rubber duck tattoo uh, which is a bit unadvised if you ask me I mean I think he might regret that when he's an older minifigure uh, nonetheless it is an incredibly fun build uh, and I have been just playing with this on my desk and I've tried it on the loop de loop and it does work I do suspect, though, it's at a disadvantage to the other ones, just because it's kind of a different shape. It does seem to sort of uh, go wrong more often than the others. But nonetheless, it's a cool thing. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with that, so we might need ideas for incorporating that in the city as well. But anyway, on to our hideout. Let's cut this carefully so we can keep the box. I don't keep boxes generally of sets that are selling sort of hundreds of thousands around the world but when it's a special one like this it is quite nice to keep sort of flat packed somewhere in your house if you've got the space and what do we got we've got a very crumpled <laughs> instruction manual and four bags looking good no sticker sheet i don't suppose there was supposed to be uh with just the shields being printed pieces so as usual uh i'm not going to bore you with the build i'm just going to get on with it and then i'll give you my thoughts on this one well, both number one bags done, and I'm really enjoying this build already. There's some quite interesting part combinations making up the interesting tree shape at the bottom, all in black, so you probably can't see it that well. Um, and for those who don't remember, I mean, if you're lucky enough to be sort of under about, well, 35, I suppose, <laughs> then you may not know why this tree is even in the colour black. Uh, and that's because the original set uh, was kind of before there was much brown at all. You got the odd treasure chest in brown or something like that, but really very little else oh, and bows and things like that. But uh, yeah, so black was used for wood still. But uh, yeah, it's shaping up pretty well. I'm enjoying it. Um, it's a bit of a shame we haven't got a printed piece for the mushroom. And it's a bit of a shame that out of these new outlaws, which we've got two to join our merry band, which is fantastic, uh, they've both got exactly the same torso. And that's made even worse when you consider the uh, three uh, outlaws that are going to come with the new Lion Knight's Castle that's uh, just been announced uh, they've all got exactly the same torso as well so that's a bit of a shame given the original line had I think four or five or even six different torsos uh, it just seems a shame that everyone's got exactly the same one usually I kind of like it when they aren't uh, gender specific but in this case it might have been uh, actually nice if they were anyway two more people for the band uh, and given this guy's got a red feather much like Robin he actually came with two extra ones as well so yeah, I just need more of these hats. I've had a quick check on bricks and pieces, and they aren't available, uh, at least not yet anyway. And they've also been included in one of those um, plant sets. I think it's for the succulent plants, uh, and they aren't included on that listing either. So hopefully that's just a matter of timing, because uh, what are feathers without additional hats for additional outlaws? Anyway, uh, yeah, a wonderful little uh, target thing here for uh, aiming your arrows at so that's really good uh, so I guess I'd better get on with bag 
2, but I was starting to already consider about where I could place it in my city, and one option is against the wall as a facade, of course, and, um, well, I just think it might be too thick already, especially for around my train lines anyway, because I've got about four studs there before a train comes thundering past, and that would take out, well, parts of the tree and parts of this kind of battlement section already, so I don't think that's a goer. Hmm, might be tricky to place. Now, if you are considering that major Lego purchase at the moment and you're wondering whether to go ahead now or later, I would do it now just to secure yourself one of these wonderful uh, forest hideouts because this, for me, is the best gift with purchase that I can even remember. I mean, it's kind of really quite impressive in its size uh, and all of the details as well with these minifigures, shields, uh, accessories and all the rest of it. Loads of details throughout. I'm really quite impressed with it. Uh, add to that the fact that they've even given us a wonderfully nostalgic yellow box, uh, harking back to the original set in 1988, of course, 6054 Forestman's Hideout, which looks a lot more lumpy uh, because of the lack of variety of pieces you had in those days. But it's quite interesting that this one's got 258 and that one still had 201 pieces, so not as big a differential as I thought there might be. Uh, but this really is fantastic. So we've covered the minifigures, and they look absolutely great. Only one gripe being the torsos, of course. That we've covered, which is great. Uh, but this has got so many interesting build techniques in making up the wooden section, all the way to the top. Uh, different ways of holding onto all these foliage pieces. So they're all at very natural, organic angles. Very sort of, uh, you know, tweakable. So it looks just right for you, for your viewing angle. Uh, I really like. It makes the whole thing appear really quite large, but also very natural. Because I was kind of thinking this would look really sort of uh, silly in my city, sort of standing out like a sore thumb. But you can almost imagine this as being, you know, hard to spot and disguised, especially from certain angles like this, uh, where you can't see the bright blue and, well, <laughs> the bright red flag that's saying, hey, look, the hideout's here. Uh, but anyway, uh, obviously, it's got an open back as well with this basic ladder going up to the sort of fortified section and a barrel full of gold on this level with the doorway in here. No bathrooms or kitchen, of course. Uh, but my favourite, I think, might be when it's folded back on itself like that, because it really then starts to look like the tree that it's based on. I mean, what kid hasn't played in a hollowed out tree? And if you haven't, kids... Get to your nearest park and find one, because that's great fun. <laughs> Got a mushroom down here. Those wonderful shields with the uh, stag on, with antlers. Absolutely great. Almost out of Game of Thrones, that. This is a bit erroneous. Maybe that should have been on the inside, this uh, spear holder. Also, I don't know why they didn't give us a black uh, modified plate to hold it. But yeah, I mean, it looks really quite well disguised from that angle, doesn't it? Uh, there is a bit of a back section open from this angle, which isn't perfect if you're picky like that. But I'm thinking, well, actually, am I? Am I going to have it open like that? Or am I going to have it closed like that? I don't really know. But if it's closed, I'll probably have this as being the main viewing angle. Or maybe even that side on. So we've got a bit of both. Well, I think you're spoilt for choice. So yeah, I'm a really big fan of this. Uh, I think it would be good to get these guys' opinion. Uh, but the most important opinion of all is clearly going to be from Mrs. Hood as to whether she wants to move in. And here is the lady herself. So here is your potential new abode. Okay. Tree-based. That looks very nice. Folding back on itself. It's supposed to be hidden, but it has got a great big red flag on the top and a spear on the outside. But uh, oh. uh, And there's the interior. Oh, that looks a bit sparse. Um, okay, it's not very well decorated, Robin. Um, well, well, we can we can address the decoration. Okay, uh, so thoughts. Um, beautiful exterior looks very uh, restful and peaceful and one with nature. Um, interior. No room for Lego room. No room for the Lego room now. Um. Where's my walk-in wardrobe? And where's your walk-in wardrobe? Oh, I thought it would have been bathrooms and kitchens you were more worried about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a nice set though, isn't it? It is, very nice. Um, I'm wondering whether it will fit uh, instead of uh, the Major Oak on Major Oak Hill, but it does look quite big. Uh, no, actually, no, that would be really good up there. Are you, um, I mean, are you going to extend it to really make it our house or is that it? No, I think that is going to be it. Okay. I mean, it would be nice to make a massive, huge Ewok village sort of style yeah, thing out I'd of like it. That. But um, yeah, well, then I'm going to have problems inciting it. I think I'm going to yeah. have problems inciting it already. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Actually, I mean, I do really 
I really like it joined together. I think that's a really yeah, nice Yeah, I do. It looks more like a tree, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, cool. I approve. I will live here. <laughs> Thanks, Mrs Hood. Bye. Well, happy wife, happy life, as they say. So that is a really good start. Uh, now on to the next gift with purchase. Cosmic Cardboard Adventures 40533. And this has got to potentially be the cutest set that has ever been made. Well, no messing around. Uh, I got straight on with this and built it all in one go without pause. And that's partially because I enjoyed it so much. Uh, I think I had a massive smile on my face the whole time while I was building this. It is just so cute and packed with absolutely wall-to-wall -wall details. It's kind of like one of my builds. There's no sort of area that hasn't had loads of thought lavished all over it i must say it's really good uh, having been based on an ideas uh, lego ideas contribution uh, it was originally called the adventures of the uss cardboard which i quite liked uh, as a name to be honest rather than cosmic cardboard adventures i don't know why you can't use uss i suppose it is associating it with the usa i suppose uh, united states ship and all that but um anyway it looks fabulous regardless of the name change they have changed some of the other details uh on the boxes for example for the stickers the original did have some really quite good uh, ideas like the um, more cardboardy glassware uh, sort of signs on the cardboards as well as some of the cardboard sort of having the Lego logo on like it was uh, one of those boxes we've all received through the post uh, but this one is still good having uh, sort of hand painted arrows and dials and still got a this way up sticker on the front as well as these sort of comet type details on the side we've still got the plungers uh, they've actually added a little bit of detail if I remove the spacecraft from its space in that we've got the Vita Rush cans making up the uh, back jets there which is a really nice touch uh, and in the original Cat and Teddy were co-pilots for this ship but now we've just got Cat inside and Teddy in his own wonderful mech walker with loads of things raided from the kitchen and from the uh, understairs cupboard by the looks of things and that's really great with its red and blue roller skates which you get a spare of for each so somebody can be using the other pair around my city uh, and the room has got a lot of detail as well we've got a nice rug on the floor we've got three wonderful toy soldiers or I couldn't work out if they were supposed to be little aliens actually because they could be little green men couldn't they and they've obviously been painted recently with that uh, paintbrush and we get a spare paintbrush which is nice to have in the city as well and a spare little green man so I think I'll add that to the scene so you've actually got four fantastic and scissors from the creation now there's one improvement and one sort of uh well other direction type comment I suppose to make about the room one we've got this wonderful flag with that old lego classic space set here uh, which is really great. It's the same on both sides. It's nice they actually gave us two of the same sticker and that's really nice to have. I mean the original was sort of a hand-coloured sort of pizza box sign I think but I think I prefer this one actually. At least for me that's very nostalgic. But the negative comment is that uh, these stars in the original were glow in the dark and maybe it was hard for Lego to keep the cost down or make those pieces in that colour but that would have been a real nice touch both for showing up when this is on display uh, but also because, well, tiny stars in glow-in-the-dark would be really good and would go with the bigger ones that we're getting with some of the stunt sets to make a really good uh, sort of glow-in-the-dark ceiling scene for my Lego room. Anyway, so that is pretty much all fantastic. Uh, we've got control panels both for the front cockpit and the uh, <laughs> co-pilot there in the back uh, and the wings are nice, all the colours. We've got no sort of leaking colours from other sections coming through really nice development pieces and it is almost uh faithful to the original set so i don't think that's too bad they've actually improved it in some respects where they made the bedroom a little bit bigger as well which i think gives the uh, set a bit better balance so the question is how on earth am i going to get this into my lego room uh, early thoughts are obviously i could build a residential block where this is just uh, one of the floors this guy in his bedroom but to be honest i don't know that just seems a bit of a huge build just to put something on the inside that will then not be seen very much. Uh, so the other alternative is we embrace the kind of uh, imagination of this young chap and actually have him flying 
in the space scene of Bricknotium, which is obviously on the ceiling of my Lego room, because that's where I put all of my space stations and spacecraft and satellites and so on. So should I maybe stick him upside down to my ceiling so he's actually in space? Uh, it'd be quite fun in one respect. I don't know if uh, he'd survive that long without breathing at apparatus, uh, nor would Cat, of course, and I'm not sure Teddy could go up there as well. But um, that is another thought. So you'll have to give me your thoughts on that uh, so we can decide how best to use him. But, I mean, worst case scenario, I could put this thing on display because it really is nice. I mean, I just think it's fantastic. It was a great uh, contribution to LEGO Ideas. When I first saw it, I thought, well, that's got to win. Uh, and it rightly did. I think I voted for it as well. So, uh, you know, kudos to the designer of it. Uh, and kudos to Lego for making uh, Teddy's mech. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> Fantastic. So, wow, haven't we done well so far? I have started with the best two um, gifts with purchase, but um, yeah, they are absolutely great. So more ideas for this one. I don't think I'll be placing that today. Cool. Right. Should we get on with a third one? Uh, this is 40529, which is the Children's Amusement Park. Well, you wait ages for a good gift with purchase, and then three come along at once. I think this is another fantastic little set. Uh, a bit smaller than the previous two, but um, still pretty good. Uh, I don't know if you do the same thing as me. Sometimes I hold back a major purchase that I want, but I'm not desperate to get my hands on, uh, just in case something really good comes along in a gift with purchase, uh, and then I've got something to put in the basket that will help me get it, because it's things like the unique stickers in this set with all the bananas up here, down on these pillars, front and back, and this really interesting sort of a monkey build that make me very keen to get all the ones that are relevant to my city. Uh, I'm not too bothered about the other lines, of course, like the Friends and Star Wars ones and so on. Um, but yeah, this is a great little set. It's kind of great and kind of bad for me in particular because, well, there's so many good little builds, but I'm not sure I can use them. Uh, so first of all, we've got this really small sort of hooker duck uh, and hooker frog, which is well, very similar to my motorised hooker duck, obviously. I might be able to use that piece somewhere. So I've got the uh, little uh, signature that you need uh, two ducks to get a prize. But I think that's a bit uh, of a hard tariff, to be honest. But anyway, so I don't think I need a very small one of these that won't be motorised in addition to my proper one. So that's that kind of out the window. There's a strength test machine, which as always is good fun and is playable by a big fig like us. There you go. But uh, again, there was one in the fairground people pack. Uh, and because I had two of that people pack, because it was on sale at Amazon, I got two and made my one super tall. Uh, so it's a really impressive strength tester. So I might take the bell off this one, which is a sticker, and apply it to mine. I can't remember what mine's got on the top. Um, and this I'm sure I could use somewhere else. But again, I don't think I need two of those in a very cramped fairground. So yeah, although these are great side builds, I don't think I'm going to be using them at all. Uh, and then we've got the main event, which I've got the two minifigures on. Little girl with a lolly and little boy with nothing. I think he has a banana, but I gave it to the monkey at the top. Uh, on this banana themed uh, monkey swing. And it's really good. It's got really fantastic motion using these pieces that I haven't seen before. I say pieces, it's actually one. This piece that goes all the way down here along the bottom and back up. And it's kind of just hooked on the top uh, of some Technic pins, which makes it swing very well. If I just knock it, it will just keep going for absolutely ages. Uh, but the problem is I've got a full-blown pirate ship in my fairground, which is motorized. Uh, I have got a swing in my playground, haven't I? So it wouldn't go in there. So the question is, where on earth could this go that's not going to be really doubling things up? I mean, it could go in my fairground as a non-motorised kiddie ride, but I don't know, is that a bit of a cop-out? Not too sure about that. Uh, and then I think I've already had one suggestion as to uh, put this dismantled on a railway carriage. Well, it'd have to be pretty dismantled because uh, my carriages have to stay pretty much six wide to fit through eight wide tunnels and therefore well it wouldn't look much like this at all and I wonder if it would lose all of its detail by the time you'd stripped it down so much taken the monkey off and everything else it just looked like a pile of parts so yeah I need ideas for this um it's not so much of a disappointment in that I didn't sort of make a special purchase just to achieve this gift uh that was to get the cosmic adventures so basically this came along 
uh, as well. And if I had to pick one, it definitely wouldn't have been this one. But um, yeah, it's still a nice little set that I wouldn't mind incorporating into my city. But yeah, is it worth the footprint in what's becoming incredibly dense? Hmm, ideas. Well, three sets down and one to go, and this is the Speed Champions Aston Martin Valkyrie AMR Pro. And, well, this really isn't my bag, uh, no pun intended, <laughs> um, as you might have guessed. I mean, I don't think I'm going to get a minifigure in there. I don't even think there's a load of great parts in there. So I think I'm probably not going to open this and build it because I think somebody else might enjoy it more than me. So I think I'm going to pass this on and give it to a friend of the channel. Uh, not one of you lot, somebody that I know uh, in real life. So uh, I'll do that there and focus on these three. So uh, I wanted ideas for this one. I wanted ideas for this one placement. But what I'm going to go ahead and do right now is try and place this in the city. So let's go up to the Lego room. All right, so into our very packed and stacked Lego room. And it's going to be quite hard to place anything in our established areas just because it is so full uh, but then again this forest hideout is rather special so maybe it should get the power to bump something that is slightly less good out of the way uh, as it will take precedence uh, so this is the kind of old town area here that runs from pretty much that end of Diagon Alley through all the medieval stuff to Apollo Arcade with its wonderful statue at the end. So it feels like it would be appropriate to put it in this area. Uh, no, not on the back of a truck. I've just dumped it there for now. <laughs> so it's a kind of stable place for it to stand while I'm talking. Now, one idea had been to open this up into its sort of uh, open backed uh, kind of format and have it pressed up as a facade against the wall, maybe here. But as you can see, I've only got four studs depth and well, it just won't work. It's not so much the footprint right at the very bottom, but all of these wonderful details like the shields and stuff, as I said earlier. So basically that is not going to work at all. Uh, the other idea I had was replacing the major oak on this tree with this uh, set. Uh, now this, the story behind this tree is it's the one that was uh, planted after Robin Hood fired his final arrow out of a window of a tower. Uh, and it's a real life tree uh, in Sherwood Forest, a real one. <laughs> there is a real Sherwood Forest, I assure you. Um, and it's very many hundreds of years old. Uh, and it's a tourist attraction now. So it'd be kind of a shame to uproot this, but then maybe this would actually become the major oak. But again, there isn't much space. I do like this path that zigzags down into the wall. Uh, and the space for the tree is only, what, six by eight studs. So... We're going to be losing a lot of the detail if I try and squeeze it in there. And that is where I'm planning to build up that army full of people with Glona Dock skeletal horses. So it's really going to be a bit too busy up there if I squeeze this tree in. Uh, and I can't really start playing around with the drawbridge and so on for Brick Nottingham Castle. So, yeah, I don't think it's going to work there either. Uh, so going around uh, the room, then we've got this area where we've got the living tree. So that's kind of a similar vibe. So I don't really want to move that. Over here, we've got another green space over here. There's a little bit of space near the right hand side of that crane there. But I think that's almost certainly going to clash with trains going around corners. Like our new one here, the python with its pointed nose. I've sort of balance that tree here to see if it will work. And I think if I really strip back stuff around train nose level, it could fit there. So that is one viable option, kind of in between the uh, crazy golf course and the cargo area. But is it the best place for it? I'm not entirely sure. So that's one option. So let me know if you like that idea. Uh, another idea is to have it opened up again in um, facade format and just have it along this wall just in between two of the skyscrapers, like it's a regular building. <laughs> like, whoa, what do you mean it's out of place? Uh, <laughs> so that could be quite funny. I don't know. You'll have to tell me what you think about that. Uh, and then we're really, really full until we get to, well, the farm. I mean, it could go in front of that field, but that is a really good view. So I don't really like that idea. This space is definitely accounted for. There's a very small area there in between the train tracks, but I think we're going to have the same train nose problem. 
And that brings me full circle back to above our subway station. But it does occur to me that we do have this area, which I call Castle Green, which is where you go to sit down and have your lunch and get a coffee from the coffee chain or something like that. And maybe I could get rid of one of the three stalls there, possibly the slush ice, just because of its, uh, I don't know, less favourable sort of subject matter for me, and maybe put this in here, because although I have promised Mrs Hood it would be our house, maybe, will it fit? I think it will if we squeeze it. I'll just sort of dump it in, doing a bit of damage <laughs> for now. But it could also be a bit of a tourist destination because in real life Nottingham, there is a tourist destination called the Tales of Robin Hood, which is very popular. Uh, and basically, well, it's kind of a self-explanatory, really. It goes through all of the stories of Robin Hood uh, and people have a fun day out. So maybe it's a very mini version of that because we are just down from the uh, historic blacksmiths and the tourist office where Mrs. Hood works, and the historic uh, Crown Inn, of course. So it really would fit in this area. And we could do with a bit of height uh, in there as well. So two trees kind of next to each other, I think that kind of works. So I might put a bit more effort into getting it uh, flat and everything else, but uh, tell me what you think of that. Uh, one negative thought uh, immediately is that this is one of the very few areas we can actually see the train. Soon I'll be boxing it so uh, much into its space that you'll only be able to see it basically at this level crossing, uh, this level crossing, and, well, the bridge, of course, I suppose. But, um, yeah, it's really getting <laughs> quite hidden, uh, and it's not supposed to be uh, a minor part of the city. But, I don't know, from a distance, that blue bit of angular roof, it'd have to be diagonal, I think, as I've currently got it. Yeah, I think that could work. Right, I'm going to put a little bit of effort into placing that a little better, uh, and then you can tell me what you think of it. Well, unless I've missed something obvious, I don't think you'll have to comment at all about placement of this, because I am loving it here. I haven't spent that long trying to sort of really embed it, but already it looks like it's always been there. Fills a gap, looks much better than that slush ice bar, which I can use in the fairground, no problem whatsoever. And yeah, it's a nice splash of colour, interest, texture, everything. And we've got a nice sword fighting scene here by the historical reenactment crew of part of my outlaw gang. And they've got the target there as well. So I think that's really in keeping with Castle Green, actually. And it flows nicely on, obviously, from the castle up here with all of its goings on, like the uh, juggling jester uh, inside the courtyard there, the blacksmith uh, and the king and the armory, and the stable, and everything else, all the working stuff in the gatehouse. I won't be replacing this castle with that new, uh, newly announced castle set, though it is great. I might have it just as a display piece, I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, that continues down past Major Oak Hill, which I'm kind of glad we kept that uh, old tree there. Uh, and then the new bit as well. So yeah, I think that looks absolutely great. And now we've got a really packed and stacked old town all the way from up here and the wine bar all the way down to Apollo Arcade who uh, I need to give the shield to the statue of course uh, that we got on that last brick call and uh, next to the flamingo pink flamingo nightclub so yeah this is really shaping up to be a great part of town possibly my favorite uh, and yeah it's great to include such a wonderfully nostalgic set that I've really enjoyed building uh, whether it will have all the mod cons that Mrs. Hood wants, I don't know. Uh, and I've put her back in her position working at the tourist office. Cool. So I'm really happy with that. But do tell me what you think. And do give me your ideas for the other two and how I can use them in my city. Uh, as you can see, there isn't many places for things like this. Uh, and just so you remember, this is the playground with the swings at the back there. Cool. Right. Good additions, I think. <laughs> So, as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, uh, we'll be doing a train build, I think. But this time not for the express passenger train, 
not more amendments on that for a change. I thought I'd do something for the cargo train, so a wagon or two for that. Uh, and then on Wednesday, we'll be doing a brick haul. And if you want to send something for a future subscriber haul, you can to the usual address. Uh, and then on Friday, we'll be doing another mock build, potentially finishing one of the many projects we've started since we didn't do that again today. <laughs> anyway, whatever we get up to, I'm sure we'll have great fun. So until then, see you. Yeah, that looks good. <laughs>